Hello again, everyone. This is Zachary Lewis from the Game Studio with uh, Making Games with Flashpunk Episode 2. Today we're going to be talking about tile maps and grids. Now, we're going to start off with uh, some code that I've already written here. You can see, uh, kind of built on what, what we did last week, all we have is a, is a red square that can move as we push the arrow keys. So this is super exciting and probably everybody wants to play it right now, but let's add a little bit more flair to it. The first thing we're going to do is create a tile map. Now, a tile map is a way to store level data, um, mainly the tiles that a player walks on. So as you can see here, we've written a, or we've created a, a quick tile set, and um, so we're, we're going to be using these two tiles. We got stone tile, which will be our wall, and grass tile, which will be just our, our flat land. Uh, and a tile set is an efficient way to store this data and print it out to the screen. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new entity. It's going to be a level. Go ahead and name it level, and we'll have it extend the entity class. That'll allow us to add it to the stage and do what we want with it. Now, the, the, this is just one of many ways you could do this, but I like putting all of my level information in an entity so it's easy to check. So, the first thing we want is our variable private variable, we'll call it tiles tile sheet. Tiles. Sure, let's call it tiles. And that will be a tile map. So let's go ahead and create that tile map. Tiles equals a new tile map. Now here we go. We're, it's asking for a couple different things. It's asking for the tile set, the width, the, the height, and those are the width and the height in screen units of our tiles. Um, so for our case it will be 640 by 480 because that's the height of our screen. Then the tile width and the tile height which is the actual size of each individual tile. So first we need the tile set. What I've done is I've created a static class called assets and I've already imported my, my, my tile set right into there. Now the width as I previously said is 640 by 480 because that's the dimensions of our stage. Now these can be bigger or smaller depending on if you want to scroll your stage like a Super Mario. It would be pretty pretty long and you'd set up a, a camera to do proper scrolling but we aren't concerned with that right now. Uh, now the tile width and the tile height we're working with tiles that are 32 by 32. So there you go. Now <clears throat> a tile map is actually a graphic object so we're going to be assigning our graphic to be that tile set. And that's it. Tile map completed. Now the way that tile maps work is if you look at our thing it starts with a zero index so it'll go 0 then 1 if we added more it would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and it knows when to wrap so if you had two, two, two levels of tiles 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 etc. But right now we just have the two tiles so we're going to be working with tile 0 and tile 1. So let's go ahead and we'll also set the layer and we'll set that layer to 1 so that will mean that it will be below layer, layer 0 since the lower the number then the, then the closer to the screen it is. Now in our game world we'll go ahead and add a new level. Let's run it and see what happens. Alright so we've not actually set any, any tiles in there right now. So we aren't seeing any tile data. So the first thing we need to do is go into our level and just start assigning tiles. So we can say tiles I'm going to have to redo this. There we go. I actually typed an A in there instead of leaving it blank. Alright, so now we can set our tiles. And you can see it's got a bunch of different functions that allow us to create new, new tiles. So we're going to go ahead and say set region. Right Now we want all the, all the rows and all the columns just to start off. So we'll go, our column is going to be 640 divided by our tile width. And our row is going to be 480 divided by our tile height. And then the height in tiles, okay that's incorrect. So we want to start off with a 0, 0. Right? We start off with the first column. This is defining a rectangle. And our width is going to be what I just wrote. 640 divided by 32, 480 divided by 32. I'm terrible with commas by the way. So 
All right. And now the index. This is asking which tile. Do we want to use tile 0 or tile 1? So we'll go ahead and use tile 1, which is our grass tile. So hopefully when we run this, we'll see some grass. There you go. Now our player is walking around in this lush field of grass. It's pretty exciting, right? So now we can go in there and we can define uh, walls wherever we want them. So we'll make a couple wall areas and we're going to use set region again. Set region. So let's make a, a nice wall. Let's maybe row three to row. Let's start at three, three, and we'll go to three, five. So that'll make a row a couple units wide. So now you can see we have this nice wall. Now we can walk right over it. What's the deal with that? Well, we're going to use a grid to apply that data, to apply the collision data. But as you can see, we can create these tile sets pretty quickly. And if we want to set individual tiles, well, we can go tiles.setTile, and then it asks for the column and the row in integer numbers as opposed to our, our screen numbers. So we can say we want tile 63, uh, let's go 65. We want that to be a wall as well. And now you see that we've added this extra little wall right there. So let's, let's make this more interesting. So let's go like 12, 5. Save it off, compile it. There you go. Now you see that we've got a little bit of interesting features up here. So now we're going to create a, a grid. And basically what a grid is, is a collision layer, a collision mask that we're going to use to collide our player against. Now the grid is also going to be part of our same tile entity, so all we have to do is check collision with that entity as opposed to checking collision with the grid itself. So again, we're going to create our new variable. It's going to be a new grid. And let's go ahead and instantiate the grid. We'll do it down here. So grid equals new grid. And again, width of the grid in pixels, 640. Height of the grid, 480. Cell width, 32. 32. And the offset, we're still going to stay 0, 0. So now we have our brand new grid. So with that grid, we want to use the mask. All right, now the mask is a collision component. If no mask is set, then it just uses its, its default hitbox. Um, but since we are setting our mask to be our grid, then it'll actually start assigning collision data there. So our mask is going to equal grid. Plain and simple. Now there's not going to be any collision right now because there's nothing to collide against. So let's go ahead and populate our grid. So we can do the same kind of thing. Set rectangle. Now the first column, what did we say before? We said 3, 3, and 3, 5, and solid is true. So that will set a solid region right there. And we can do the same thing. GERD is a new thing that I'm inventing right now. No. Grid set cell, and like we did, 12, 5. And it's solid, true. So nothing really is going to happen right now. We need some way to notify us of a collision. So in our player, I've already written out a function called update collision. So what I'm basically going to do in my level is set its type. So this type will let us know, like we talked about last time, what we're colliding against. So we'll just call that type level. So the level has a type of level. So now we can say if collide with level at our current x and y, then we will trace collision. Like, hey, I've been collided into. Uh, I apparently do not know how to use Camtasia. So here's a thing. There's a face. How do I get out of this? It's the fun in screencasting. God. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, here we go. Back to normal. Okay. Screencasting. This is going to be awesome. I can't stop compiling. 
All right. I apologize for these technical malfunctions. There we go. So now if we collide with level, then we will trace out collision to the screen. We'll see it in our output. So let's see that happen. No collision. Bo, we have collided. We stopped colliding. Let's come over here. We are still colliding. So as you can see, we've set these rectangles up so where we can properly collide. So next episode, we're going to talk about resolving that collision and preventing our player from entering those tile areas. See you then.